Welcome. We're so glad that you've joined us today. Our hope is that today's service is a blessing to you. If this is your first time or you'd like to learn more about Victory, please visit us at victorychristian.church. Click on I'm new here. We would love to hear from you. Now enjoy today's service. Hi everybody, I've got the announcements for you. First of all, I want to report back to you that our teenagers had an amazing week at youth camp this year. It looked different, but they had just such great attitudes and rolled with the changes this year and had a lot of fun and really met with God this week. I want to say a special thank you to Abigail and her whole team for all the work that they did to make that happen this week. We are so proud of you and we're so thankful for you. A couple of uh, important Sundays that are coming up. First of all, on Sunday, August 9th at 1.30, we are going to have baptisms at the river. If you've never been baptized, if you would like to be baptized as a show of your commitment to Christ, uh, go to victorychristian.church and click on Next Steps, and uh, we'll get you lined up. It's going to be a really exciting day. Again, that's Sunday, August 9th at 1.30 at the James River. It'll be right there at Maiden's Landing. Okay, one other Sunday we want to keep in mind is Sunday, August 16th is going to be the Sunday where we have our soft launch, which means we'll be opening up the building for our 9 and 11 a.m. services. We're excited for those who are ready to come and start gathering here at the building again.
to just lift up every person, God in this body of believers. This week, Father, that they would take time out, each one of us would take time out to just lift our voices to you and just to call out your name. Because you are worthy of all praise. And we just magnify you this evening and thank you, God, that you have made us well in our souls. Yes. That because of you, Jesus, we can have peace. And we can have joy in you, God. Thank you, Father, for stirring that up in me this evening. Thank you, God, for taking the dryness and the hardness, God, and breaking me apart to worship you. Oh, God, we need that every day. So I ask, God, that you would pour yourself out this week in each one of us. In Jesus' name. Hey, church family. You ever gotten that perfect gift that was really what you wanted? And it wasn't so much that it was it was the perfect gift so much as you knew how much thought went into that gift coming to you, that that person spent time thinking about who you are, what that relationship means to you. And to just be able to get that gift exactly right, into, and it means so much more. Even if it's not necessarily something that, that you wanted, but the thought behind it was so good and that that bond was struck as a result that's where i had had a thought this this week that i really feel like that's how god wants to receive the offerings that we give that we actually are doing our best to give thought to what we're doing why we're doing and being very intentional with the idea that the gift is actually going to strengthen that connection we have to god and we really want to be able to do that as it's an opportunity for worship to get to know God and to be with God and to give back to, to honor the, the gifts that he has given us. There's a scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. It says, Each one must give in, as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. And I love how it says decide. The idea that it's not an accidental or a, you know, on a whim. This is something that you choose that you're choosing that relationship with God as you make that gift. If you'd like to join us in this act of worship, you can do so by going to victorychristian.church and click on Give. Each week we like to pray for an area church, and this week it's Hope Church. God, we thank you for uh, giving us a community of people and for reaching out to us and encouraging us to reach out to you. God, we just pray that we would be we would keep uh, our church family and uh, our local church families in our minds and be intentional about doing things that draw us together so that we can be a beacon for people who are lost in this world. Pray your blessings on us. Keep us safe in Jesus name. Amen. Hi everybody. Are you ready for the Bible today? Exodus 20 verse 12 says this, honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. Let's pray today. Father, we love you today, and we thank you for your word. We thank you that whether we're listening on a podcast, watching on our phone or on television, or even when we're in the, a building listening live, Lord God, that your word has power and authority today. And God, we open up our hearts to hear what you want to say. Your word has power, and you are the author of this word. And so, God, we open up our hearts to the Bible today and to what you would like to say. I pray for the empowerment of your Holy Spirit, God, to share what's in your heart. Let that come through today. We love you and honor you. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, we're in our series called Take 10, and this is part three. And We've been looking at the Ten Commandments, and uh, we've been grouping some of those commandments together that preach really well, and other commandments, we're just letting them stand alone. And this week, we're looking at the, the Fifth Commandment, which has to do with honoring your father and your mother. And I have to say, God is so smart 
because there is so much more here than just simply be nice to mom and dad. And so let's dig in that, into that again today. Um, Exodus 20 verse 12 again says, Honor your father and mother so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. First, I think it's important to say that this is the only commandment that comes with a promise. The other nine don't come with promises attached right to them. Um, and it sets this commandment apart from the others. I wouldn't say that it's more important than the others, but it certainly is unique. Again, that scripture, it says, so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. The promise here is a long life in the land, and, and the land represents that place of blessing. So it, honoring our father and mother positions, ourself, positions us in a place where we can live long in blessing, if you will. I, I think it's really cool that that's a promise that we can hold on to. And of course, part of me um, kind of jokes in my own mind, and I wonder if, if God said so that you can live long is because he knew that for ages and ages, mothers would say, I brought you in this world, and I can take you out of this world. <laughs> Just kind of think, maybe the Lord was thinking practical, like, you better honor your mama, or you ain't going to live long. But um, I think it's neat that it's got that attachment of this promise of a long life. And I think part of that has to do with, it's more than just mom and dad. This principle goes deeper, and we're going to unpack that as we go through that today. So he knows that, and when I say he knows, God knows. God knows that parents are the first place in our lives where we learn this principle of honor and respect. He also knows that respecting our parents is not something that we just do from zero to 18, but that actually it's a lifelong journey, that we all have seasons in our, our lives and that God is calling us to be respectful of our parents throughout our lives. Moms and dads, I want to say this, this to all of us today. Um, it's important that we don't allow our children to show disrespect to us, to others, not because we have to maintain some um, some honor for us and we have to hold on to it. But actually, disrespect hurts our children. It, it is a principle that it's just not good for them. And so it's important that we don't allow it. It doesn't mean that children can't disagree. And it doesn't mean that children shouldn't have a voice and be able to air, um, share that voice in a respectful way. But you can allow a child to grow up, learn that, and practice respect. And I think um, having that tension is a, a good thing. The other thing to note here is that, you know, parents, um, we need to make sure that we are being respectful to others because our model really does matter. A lot of times, um, children learn disrespect from us. I mean, I, I'm not saying that we all can, we can all have disrespect just because we have a sinful nature. But when we as parents model disrespect towards bosses and authorities and other, uh, other people, then our, our kids can pick up on that. And then what, we're end, what we end up doing is asking them to practice something that we're not doing ourselves. And so it's important for us to model that well for them. You know, this, this principle of respecting your parents, um, honoring your parents, it just seems so simple when it's written down. But most of us, we've been on the journey of life, and we recognize that when you start going through some scenarios and experiences in life, it actually does become more difficult. For instance, you know, we ask ourselves, but, but what about, you know, the, the, the teenager who is learning and attempting to assert their own independence kind of thing? Well, you know, that's, that's like real life right there, and I think that's something that all of us have experienced if you're not experiencing right now. Um, and the, the fact is, it is possible to assert independence and honor our parents, right? And moms and dads, it's important that we allow our children to, to grow in that independence. We want them to have agency over their lives as they grow up. Um, but it's a lot of times hard and messy to figure out. And words like, I'm sorry, and I got that wrong, both on parents' sides and, and children's side, can really help us navigate through those times to get it more and more right, if you will. Um, and it's also important, parents, for us to realize that God has given us a guardrail in Scripture. Yes, our children are 
commanded in Scripture. Honor your father and mother. In Ephesians 6, 4, it says this. It says, fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. What does that mean to exasperate your children? Well, I think what Scripture is trying to say is, hey, you can be so hard and so tight, so controlling, that your children don't have enough room to breathe. And when that happens in a child's life, um, it can really cause them to rebel. It gives the temptation of rebellion even greater. It's not justification, but certainly the temptation is there. Normally, parents, when we do that, um, it's because out of fear, we create too many controls. And if you've been parenting for any time, you recognize that parenting is an art. It's not a science. It's not just um, simple black and white all the time. There are judgment calls and things like that. And God has called you to be a parent. He's called you to set up guardrails. He's called you to, to um, create standards with your own family. I just want to encourage you to do it prayerfully. Um, even consult when you do it. And do it in a way where it's always for them. And it's not driven out of fear, but it's driven out of wisdom. And, uh, and then we'll be able to respect that guardrail in Scripture that says, do not exasperate your children. And um, I think it's really important. We do want to give our kids good, clear boundaries. But we also want to give them some space. Because um, all of our kids make mistakes. And that's part of growing up. You made mistakes. I have made plenty of mistakes. Um, and this journey needs to have some room for that as well as the boundaries. Another scenario I want to share with you. We'll ask ourselves the question when it comes to honoring parents, but what about when your parent does not deserve honor or respect? Well, I'm glad you asked that. Um, the fact is, this principle in Scripture it grates against a cultural thing that we have learned. The cultural thing that we have learned is that respect is earned. I think all of that have heard that in our lives, right? But biblically, respect does not actually work that way. It, it is not an earned thing. And let me show that to you in Scripture because I, for some of us, that's a really big leap. I mean, we've lived by respect is earned all our lives, but let me show it to you in Scripture. In Romans 13, 1, it says this. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities. Now, I want to tell you all, the context of this Scripture is in Rome, which is a brutal government. It's a corrupt government. Um, it is not for the people. And this is what Scripture is saying to believers. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted. And those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Jumping to verse 6. This is also why you pay taxes. You thought I was going to get you out of taxes today. I'm not going to get you out of taxes. For the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. You know, what, what God is saying to us is um, we are called to honor and respect authority and it is not dependent on how good authority is. There's a, there, that, that respect, it goes so much deeper um, than giving it to those who simply deserve it. Don't get me wrong. I think those who deserve it, we should give it to them. It's so much, they make it so much easier for us to give it to them. But that's, the thing is, is, is the commandment itself doesn't say, honor good parents. Honor a good father and a good mother. It doesn't say honor deserving parents. It just says honor your father and mother. There's no clause. As a matter of fact, there's no clause, but there's a promise attached to it. There's, no, there's nothing that says that mom and dad have to be good or mom and, have to, and dad have to, to fit this bar. And, and I think actually when you step back, you think about how smart God is when he sets up 
his principles and things like that. I think he knows when he writes this scripture, when he, when, he, when he gives this to us, I think he knows that all parents are imperfect and that we're all a mixed bag and that there, there are no perfect parents out there. In fact, our children know our weaknesses probably better than most people. And that call to honor our father and mother is not dependent upon performance. There's a bigger picture here. And the bigger picture is this. Honor actually reflects way more on the person who's giving it than the person who's receiving it. And that's why in Scripture, God can call all of us to a life of honoring parents honoring authorities and not put stipulations around it because he knows that that honor is good for you and it's good for me. It's good for us to have that in us. I remember when I was um, 17 years old and I was thinking about going into the Marine Corps and I, I was, I'd actually interviewed with um, all of the armed services and was doing my due diligence. I've always been myself and very analytical, wanted to know what all the armed services offered and I I really liked the Marine Corps, and I ended up spending a day with a recruiter and going up to Quantico, and we probably had a good half a day together, if not longer. And this guy was, I think he was a staff sergeant, and he made a lifelong impression on me. And it was the fact that he was so respectful and honoring to everyone. Now, of course, in the military, there you have to be respectful and you know, salute officers and things like that. But this guy, he said, sir and ma'am, to everyone. And it wasn't just because of military culture. There was something in him that had bought into, I'm going to show respect to everyone, regardless of their tier, regardless of anything. And there was something about that that I loved so much that from that season on in my life, um, I've had this habit of calling just about anyone, sir and ma'am. Sometimes it gets me in trouble because a lady will think, you know, that I'm calling them old. And I, I always put in there if, if they feel that way, listen, I, I'll call my own daughter ma'am. Like, it's not about that. But I, I just love that, that principle that I saw in him. And the fact was, the honor that that man was giving to the people around him reflected more on his heart than it reflected on all the individual's. Because it was something that he was giving as a gift to every single person. And the reality is, God calls us to honor because it's good for us. God calls us to respect because it produces something pure in us. Frankly, it's just good fruit. It's good for us. It's good for people around us. And if you and I can disconnect that cultural thing that says... I only give respect to those who I believe deserve it, it will produce fruit in you as well. One of the things that I remind myself is there's a scripture in James chapter 3 that talks about um, how can you praise God and curse your brother who's in the aid in the image of God out of the same mouth? How can both salt water and pure water flow out of the same mouth? And I'm giving this to you a little extra today. And what I saw in that scripture was that... Um, that God is saying, how can you worship me and then curse another person who's made in the image of God? And basically what they're saying is, how can you curse anyone who has God's image in them? That's wrong. And basically the idea is that honor and respect is based on the fact that people are made in the image of God. It's actually more about who their maker is and respecting that than it really is about their performance. The fact is, Everyone deserves to be respected, and you and I don't want to be the judge of everyone. The fact is, everyone will stand before God someday. That is way above my pay grade, you know, his throne of judgment for our deeds. So many of us, we want to stand in the place of judgment and execute judgment. And I just want to encourage you, I don't want to carry that weight. 
What I want to do is I want to call people to a loving relationship with Christ. I want to reach out to people and say, you know what? God loves you. And, and showing honor and respect to people is a way of giving them a gift and, and engendering something from them that could actually give you an opportunity with the gospel. Because it says in Romans that God's kindness leads us to repentance. Sometimes our own judgments and our own anger and our own issues and our own unforgiveness can cause us to show respect and to throw stones at other people. And the reality is that God has called us to draw people to a loving relationship with Christ for people to turn their lives over to him, ask God to forgive them of their sins and to follow him. All right, I got on a tangent on a video message today or a podcast message today. But um, it's something that I'm really performing, uh, I'm, I'm really um, passionate about today. I want to say to you today that in this principle of honor, God is not asking you to cover up the wrongs of others or cover up the wrongs of authority. He's not even asking you to look away and to, to, to not say that sin is sin or that wrong is wrong. But what God is saying is that respecting and honoring others is not performance-based. That's what Scripture is telling us. Another couple principles I want to touch on today is that honoring parents teaches us how to honor and submit to authority. All of us are under authority in one way or another way. And God works through authorities. It doesn't matter what season of life we are in, we have authorities over our lives. And they are there to bless us. I remember when I was a, a school teacher, I was having a problem with a boss. They, they had put a boss over me, and this boss came to me and kind of, I felt like in a condescending way, was like, I'm going to take you under my wing and teach you some things and stuff like that. And it just rubbed me wrong, honestly, because I was arrogant, and I thought, I know more than this person, and I don't need them mentoring me. It felt weird, and I didn't like it. So I went to his boss, because that person had previously been my boss, and I said, hey, I don't like this. If you got, and I took an offense to it. I said, if you all think there's something wrong with me, tell me what it is, but I don't like all this. I, you know, I, I felt like I was being handled. And this, this person looked at me, his name is Bill, one of the greatest mentors of my life. And he says to me, he says, Mike, if we thought there was something that needed to change, we would tell you. And if there was a, if we didn't want you here, you would be gone. And when he said that, I believed it. <laughs> I was just like, yes, sir. He just kind of put me in my place. And that encounter with authority, even though it started off wrong, it really created an adjustment in my heart and helped me see pride in my heart. And the fact is, if you are not under authority, then what happens is you think you're an authority unto yourself. And that is one of the most dangerous places to be because I would argue that if we are an authority unto ourselves, then in that scenario, in that scenario we are actually under the devil's authority uh, because there's no such thing as just being under your own, own authority. So to honor God, or excuse me, to, to, to honor authority is to honor God. And every time we choose to be honoring towards bosses, every time we choose to be honoring towards um, officials, every time we choose to be honoring towards peers and others around us, it's a way that we honor God because people are made in the image of God and we are showing them a respect. One of the people in scripture who emulated this the best was um, David in the Old Testament who we become King David. Now in David's life story at a young age and then a couple more times in his life, a prophet would come to him and say, David, you are going to be the king of Israel, which was pretty amazing, right? To know this and to be prophesied over at a young age. But here's the, here's the catch. Throughout his life, he had a relationship with the current king who was King Saul. And they, King Saul got incredibly jealous of David. As a matter of fact, they had this song, Saul has killed his thousands and David's killed his ten thousands. And Saul got crazy jealous about this and actually started to try to pursue David and kill him. Now, most of us, if we knew that God said we were going to be king 
And we knew that the current king was literally trying to destroy our lives. As a matter of fact, at one point, the king takes a spear and throws it at David. And David could have just taken that spear out of the wall and thrown it at, at, at Saul. He could have taken Saul out, but he wouldn't do it. And the phrase that David used is, I am not going to lift my hand against the Lord's anointed. David had such respect for authority that he would not take matters into his own hands, even though he knew he was the king's successor. He could have just made it shorter, but what David understood is that God is the one who's going to remove Saul, not David. And David didn't want to carry that. That principle has always been so impressive to me because David would not come against someone who was trying to come against him. Talk about turning the other cheek and talk about knowing like you're the next in line. That story has always impressed me. God starts this lesson of honoring authority when we're children by telling us early on, honor your father and mother. But the principle is there to serve us for all of our lives. I think God puts it in the Ten Commandments and he puts it in there so that from a young age we would learn how to honor an imperfect uh, person or persons, our mom and our dad. I think he knew exactly what he was doing so that in all of our lives this principle of honoring people of, in authority would be something that we would have learned early. We would have learned it by how our parents honor others. We learn it by how we have honored our parents who are going to be imperfect. Many, many have great parents, but there's no such thing as a perfect parent. And so then as we move on in life, we learn to honor teachers. We learn to honor our boss. We learn to honor governing authorities. We learn to honor church leaders, which I think y'all do, do a great job of that. And ultimately, we learn to honor God who is the only one who is perfect. You know, this is what happens when we make Jesus our Lord. When we make Jesus our Lord, we say, God, I am going to submit my life to you. We make him the authority of our lives, and we follow him, and we worship him, and we obey him, and he is such a good shepherd. John 10, 11 says this, I, speaking about Jesus, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I want to tell you today that we have in God and in Jesus, we have the most amazing leader, the one who's worthy of all the honor, worthy of all the worship. He gives us this principle because it's good for us. And it all the more helps us to worship him. Maybe you're in a place today where Jesus is not your Lord. And when I say that, what I mean is he's not the ruler over your life. I want to encourage you today that he is such a good shepherd. Jesus has laid down his life for you. And he is willing to lead you into the life that he has for you. He asks for you to put your faith in him. He asks for you to turn your life over to him. Which means saying, God... Forgive me of my sin. I want to turn away from that, from owning my own life. And I want to turn my life over to you and follow you. And I want to tell you, he's a good shepherd. He's a good leader. He's the only perfect authority. And he's so worthy of your life and so worthy to be followed. I want to encourage you today, if you haven't made that decision and you're ready to turn your life over to Jesus, you feel that thing in your heart that just says, I need to do this. I need to give my life to God completely. I want to encourage you to pray that prayer now, and I want to encourage you to pray that prayer today. That prayer goes something like this. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I turn my life over to you. You are my God from today and forever, and I'm going to follow you. And what God will do is he's going to come into your life, and he is going to give you a new life and it's going to be a journey of walking with him. If you're making that decision today, I want to know about it. I want to be able to reach out to you and rejoice with you and make sure you have everything that you need for the journey of following Jesus. If that's you today, go to victorychristian.church 
and click on next steps because we want to hear from you and um, we're so excited for you. Today, if you're listening to this message and you recognize that in your own heart there's some work that needs to be done in the, in the realm of honor. Maybe, maybe there's a boss that you are angry at and you're bitter at. Maybe there's a parent that you haven't forgiven. I want you to know it's not that God is trying to cover up a sin of a parent. It's that honor is good for you. And that forgiveness is something that he gives you as a gift so that you can be free from the power that it has over you. And I just want to encourage you today, would you forgive? And would you make a choice to honor just because God made them? Just because God has called us to give honor and respect. And I want to tell you, it's for you. It's for you and he loves you. I'm going to pray for you today and just ask God to help you with any area where there's a challenge. And maybe even in your own home, as I'm talking about this today, maybe in your home there is a culture of, of, that is not honoring that needs to change. And maybe there needs just to be a family conversation. Hey, we need to change our tone. Hey, we need to change the way we interact with one another. We need to build each other up more and stop tearing each other down. If, if that's you, I just encourage you, do the courageous thing and have that conversation with your family today. Let me pray for you. Father, I love you and I thank you for this gift and I, of honor. And, and I pray that it would be more than a, than a rule because I know you're, you're so much greater than a rule. God, there's a principle here that you want us to capture in our hearts. And I pray today, would you help us to capture the principle? And God, get the revelation of how good honor is. God, I believe that we travel more light or if we honor people because it helps us to not hold on to things we shouldn't hold on to. For those who need to forgive someone today, Give them the power to forgive. For those who need to honor somebody that they sincerely don't like, I pray, God, would you give them a gift in their own hearts to be able to show honor because it's, it's what you would call us to do. And God, I pray that you would use our honor and our respect for authorities and others in our lives. God, is something that will open up doors for the gospel. Open up doors to say, There is one who's worth all the honor and all the glory and all of our worship. And he is our one true God. God, we love you today. We thank you today. And God, where we have sinned, where we have fallen short, we ask you to forgive us. And we thank you for the empowerment of your spirit. Father, to honor, to respect. We love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. 